Hi. Well, class two of data mining with Weka has just started. Class one has gone by without too many hitches. I've enjoyed uh, looking at your comments and on the mailing list and thank you for answering each other's questions. And thank you, Peter, for answering so many technical questions. I just thought I'd talk briefly about some of the common issues that have arisen. Uh, here they are. Uh, so uh, first of all, there's the website and how to get to the course. Some people were going straight to the YouTube videos, and if you just go straight to the YouTube videos, you don't see the activities. You should be seeing this picture when you go to the course. This is the website, and you need to go and look at the look at the course from here. Go to class one and class two and so on from here. This is the entry point to the course. Another problem for some has been installing uh, Weka on your computer. I guess I should have said that since Weka is in, written in Java, you need Java on your computer, or you need to install Java first, or install Java as part of the part of Weka. One of the problems people were having is that they didn't have Java installed. Let me just show you how to test for whether you have Java installed or not. If you go to your Windows Start menu, this is just on Windows. If I type a CMD, CMD, I get a command line command window. I call this the black screen of death, actually. We often don't like to see this, but anyway, here it is. And if you just simply type Java, and it comes back with this, then Java is installed on your computer. If it come back with, comes back with cannot find Java or something like that, then you need to first of all figure out how to get Java going on your computer and then get Weka going. So I just thought I'd mention that. A number of people have uh, made comments about the book. Someone asked, was it really necessary to uh, do the readings? They were finding the course quite easy. Well, the answer is uh, it's not really necessary to do the readings, and you're supposed to find the course easy. It might get a little tougher in the weeks to come, but uh, still, it's a pretty easy course. Uh, the readings are there for additional background, and you certainly you shouldn't feel you have to do them at all. You can do the whole course without looking at the book. We're interested in ensuring that people at all sorts of different levels who are starting out this course can succeed. So you don't have to read the book. Uh, someone else asks, is the second edition of the book okay? This is the uh, second edition of Data Mining with Weka, if you can see the cover here. I kind of like this one. Uh, it's got a chameleon kind of hidden here amongst um, New Zealand fern leaves. The third edition is uh, this one here, the latest edition, and this has got kind of a tiger hidden in the grass. Anyway, the answer is the second edition is fine. Either of those editions are just fine if you're, uh, if you're looking at the readings. And then someone else said, I hate having to read it online. And you know, I completely agree with you. I would love to be able to provide you with a free physical copy of the whole book, but unfortunately I'm not able to do that. Uh, these are the realities of publishing. I guess the publisher is trying to increase sales and uh, they're hoping that you will be tempted to go out and buy your copy, recommend it to your friends. This book makes a great Christmas present, by the way, so you can you know, give a copy to all your friends at Christmas. Anyway, we can't provide you with a complete PDF file that you can take away, and we can't provide you with a physical copy of the book. I'm really sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. Okay, the next thing I wanted to mention was the, the irises. This is kind of funny, I thought, really. Let me just go to class one here. And uh, where is class one? Here we go. This, of course, is how you're supposed to be looking at the course. This is uh, lesson 1.3. And this is where you can watch the video from. And then if you go to the activity, that's uh, this menu item here. This gives you the activity. And we had a little bit of a problem with this question, with these iris pictures. Originally, we had these A's, B's and C's permuted in different, different order for each of the possible answers. We were trying to make sure that you really concentrated on reading these answers and didn't just quickly scan through them. And we were, uh, we were hoist by our own petard. That's a 
English phrase that means you're injured by the device that you intended to use to injure others, or in our case, confused by the device that we intended to confuse you. Uh, we uh, screwed up and a couple of our answers were permuted versions of the same thing. Anyway, we fixed that now. This is the current page, so they're all ABC, ABC in the right order. We thought we should make it uh, simpler because it seems like even we couldn't understand the way we had it originally. I thought that was quite funny, actually. Now, the next thing is about the algorithms. Uh, people want to learn about the details of the algorithms and how they work. Are you going to learn about those? Is there a MOOC class that goes into the algorithms provided uh, by Weka rather than the mechanics of running it? And the answer is yes. You will be learn learning something about these algorithms. I've put up the syllabus here. It's on the uh, course web page. And you can see from the syllabus what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be looking at for example, the J48 algorithm for decision tree and pruning decision trees, the nearest neighbor algorithm for instance based learning and linear regression, classification by regression. We're looking at quite a few algorithms in classes three and four. I'm not going to tell you about the algorithms in gory detail, however. They can get quite tricky inside. What I want to do is to communicate the overall way that they work, the kind of idea behind the algorithms rather than the details. The book does give you full details of exactly how these algorithms work inside. We're not going to be able to cover them in that much detail in the course, but we will be talking about how the algorithms work and what they do. I forgot to say when I was talking about those irises that uh, someone pointed out that the iris versicolor is Quebec's floral emblem. Thank you very much for pointing that out. I didn't know that. I lived in Canada for 11 years and I didn't know that the Iris Versicolor was Quebec's flower. So that was very nice to learn. Thank you. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is um, someone asked about using Naive Bayes. How can we use the Naive Bayes classifier on a data set and how can we test for particular data uh, which whether it fits into particular classes. So let me go to Weka here, and um, we're going to be covering this in future lessons, lesson 3.3 .3 on naive bays and so on. But I'll just just show you this. All this is very easy. If I go to classifier, if I want to run naive bays, I just need to find naive bays. I happen to know it's in the bays section, and I can run it here, and I can run it. Just like that, we've just run Naive Bayes. I'll be doing this more slowly and looking more at the output in uh, Lesson 3.3. Then a natural thing to ask is if you had a particular test instance, which way would Naive Bayes classify it or any other kind of classifier? So this is the weather data we're using here. And I've created a file. Here's a file I've created. I've called it weather.oneday. Dot arf. It's a standard R file, and I got it by editing the weather.nominal.r file. And you can see that I've just got one day here. I've got the same header as for the regular weather file, and just one day. But I can have several days if I wanted. And I've put a question mark for the class because I want to know what class is predicted for that. Well, we'll be talking about this in uh, lesson 2.1. You're probably doing it right now. But we can uh, use a supplied test set. So I'm going to set that, that set that I created, which I called weather.oneday.arf, as my test set. And uh, I can run this, and it'll uh, evaluate it on the test set. On the More Options menu, I'll be learning about this in Lesson 4.3, there's an Output Predictions option here. So if I now run it and look up here, I will find that in, oops, I will find instance number one, the actual class was question mark. I showed you that. That was what was in the ARF file. And the predicted class is no. And there's some other information. So this is how I can find out what predictions would be on new test data. Actually, there's nothing to stop me setting as my test file the same as the training file. I can use this weather.nominal.r as my test file and run it again. And now I can see these are the 14 instances in the standard weather data. This is their actual class. 
This is the predicted class, predicted by, in this case, naive Bayes. And uh, there's a mark in this column whenever there's an error, when the, whenever the actual class differs from the predicted class. So again, we get that by, in the More Options menu, checking Output Predictions. We're going to talk about that in other lessons. I just wanted to show you that it's really easy to do these things with Weka. And the final thing I just wanted to mention is uh, if you're configuring a classifier, any classifier, or indeed any filter, there's these buttons at the bottom. There's an Open and a Save button, as well as the OK button that we normally use. These buttons are not about opening files in the Explorer. They're about saving configured classifiers. So you could set parameters here and save that configuration with a name and a file, and then open it later on. We don't do that uh, in this course. So we never use these open and save buttons here on the generic object editor. This is the generic object editor that I get by clicking a classifier or clicking a filter. So just ignore the open and save buttons here. They do not open our files for you. OK, that's all I wanted to say. So carry on with class two. It's great to see so many people doing this course. And uh, keep having fun, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye for now.